about, you know, when you first started teaching your kids how to scramble, you know, how did you address, hey, we don't need to scramble here, we just need a baseline defense, or we don't need to do this, or we don't need to do that. With us, when we started our club, we didn't know how to coach, they didn't know how to wrestle, mm -hmm. so we just both had unbelievable trust in each other. So if we told them to go get put on their back because we wanted to we wanted to get better at beating a 5-0 lead, our guys would just do it. They, would, they never ask questions. Well, now that we have newer kids that have come through the system, there's still that level of trust. But again, it's, hey, I don't care if you make all the mistakes in the planet in a match, but we got to have the right mindset to go back and be like, hey, you went to risk level 7, but like risk level 2 baseline defense was right here. But you went seven steps a little too far. Next time, let's make sure we recognize risk level two was much better option, which was just stuff the head and go behind versus you trying to scramble too much. And again, that's time and position. That's trust in what you're doing. But it's also trust. He's pretty new to the program, right? The dude knows what he's talking about. But it's going to take time for you to have the same level of trust. Look up, look up, look up, pay attention. It's going to take time for you guys to have the same level of trust in him, right, as you guys are in the trenches together. Same thing with you you guys that are, that are new to the program with him or haven't been around him that long is to be in the trenches and be like, okay, this is what we do. This is our training. I believe in it. He believes in me. I believe in myself, and I'm going to go execute, okay? And that's with any technique. Scrambling is just real abstract. Most people don't know, but it's the same thing with top and bottom technique. If he comes in and shows some new technique or he comes in or I come in and show new technique, so that's the way you guys got to start thinking about it. I'm okay with our guys making mistakes. I don't care if we make mistakes Super 32 finals. It stings more, right? We'll have some heartbreaking losses at Super 32 in a couple weeks. But as long as we go back with the right mindset and I say, okay, man, this, this really stung and I was pissed off for three days. All right, but let's go back and watch it. All right, and let me refine it. And then when I'm in the room again, that's fresh in my brain. It's fresh in coach's brain, all right? And then I can adjust. And again, I'm just going back to work. I'm going back to work putting that purposeful work in. Does that make sense to everybody? That's important. Anytime you're learning something new, man, it's an important thing to just understand I got to have a trust level in what I'm doing right now, and then when things get a little shifty, I go back and just adjust. That's the, that's where your whole life's going to be. You're going to fall on your face, and you're going to go back and adjust. Now, one last thing on this low single, all right, and we we're just creating opportunities to score here, all right? I'm going to angle step. I'm going to hip pull, but I'm going to drop to a body cradle. This is just one more tool we can use to secure position. So I'm going to angle step. I'm going to hip pull. I'm going to crunch. But when I crunch right here, outside hand is going to go elbow deep. Does everybody see how I'm elbow deep? Bend to the elbow, bend to the knee, and I'm going to grab my own hand. I'm cradling his body. Okay. Now, when I cradle his body, two things that I want to make sure bend to my elbows deep on his knee, the top elbow I want in his armpit. I don't want to body cradle him right. This is technically a body cradle, but it's kind of starting to turn into a, a crotch lock. That's not what I want. I want to be on the bend of the knee and up here by the armpit. Does everybody see I'm crunching him up in a nice tight ball? Now, I can do a couple things. I can crunch him up and then switch to my cradle if I want to, or I can crunch him up right here, take him straight over the top, hold them here, or just come back around here and score a takedown, all right? We don't have to catch them upside down. We don't have to cradle them. We can just use this to crunch them up, break his position, put him on his hip and make him unathletic, and then run around to the corner. And this is why I'll say, well, why wouldn't you cradle him and pin him? Well, maybe I'm down by one, and this guy shot a low single to burn the clock, and all I need to do is get a takedown. So I don't want to get in this long, drawn-out scramble and run out of time knowing what's going on in the match. So all I got to do is get a takedown, angle step, hip pull, get to my body cradle, crunch, 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 start taking him over my head here, okay, put him on his hip, crunch, run around the corner, get my two, win the match. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, if I got two minutes, if I got a minute and a half, by all means, cradle, stack them up, put them away. If I don't need it, if I got to do something quick, get that body lock, cradle, 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 body cradle, Elbow in the armpit, elbow behind the knee, crunch him up. I can even drive him to his hip. Let's go to the other leg. He goes low single, angle step, hip pull, crunch. I go body cradle here. I can crunch him up and drive him to his hip right here. Get my leg back. Start circling around. All right? It's much more basic than what we've been doing, but it's the same position. We're angle step, hip pull. I'm just crunching him up in a tight ball, putting him in an unathletic position and scoring. 
Get to that body cradle and just play around with what feels good to you. Go. Ah. 